I seem to see five things here. And I'm going to pray about those five things later. We're not going to be long. For you never to regret and to enjoy the things that God um, has, you must align yourself strictly to God's purpose for your life. Now, if you want to, if God has a purpose for your life, God has a purpose for your life. And you can say, well, Pastor, why should you regret? You are a medical doctor, you are this and that and that and that. No, 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 that's not it. Every day of my life, I've always said I want to align with God's purpose. That's what you should desire. And anytime you regret, something is missing. You are not aligned with his purpose. And not only will you align with God's purpose for your life as an individual, you must align with God's purpose for us as a corporate entity, as a church. That is it. Every day of my life, I ask God, what will thou have me do? Because I, I keep on saying that. You just say something today, you know what will happen the next minute. And it's your privilege, if you are young, to align yourself with God's purpose. And you know, for a child of God, there's this belief we have. Even when we do not intentionally see God's purpose, as long as we are following the Lord, we believe that everything is working together for our good. So we are at rest. We are peaceful. I've been doing a couple of projects. And then first time in history, every single money I have finished. Well, when I say every money finish, I don't mean I don't have 20,000 a year, 30,000 a year, 15,000 a year, but this is somebody who used to have, have a lot of, I have a lot, you know, when I, not a lot too, that you say, Pastor, let's give me one. I mean, I have some substantial thing. But I just came to a point when everything grounded. And when we were doing the project, they say, please, we need a half a million to do something. I said, I told him I don't have. He said, his man was shocked. I said, I don't have. I've eaten all my money. But I now stood before the Lord. I said, Lord, everything is purposeful about my life. Everything is purposeful about my life. So I don't sit down regretting. And I just see that even while I was sit, sitting down, saying everything is purposeful, I was lying down. Two individuals from different places just sent something to me. Although they were not as, the volume of it is not high, it was a sense that God was trying to tell me that everything worked together for your good. So think that when you see things not working, don't grumble, don't murmur. Just believe that the things we work together for your good. Let me tell you this. I've come to believe that human beings are really not as important in executing the will of God. That God can use anything to establish his purpose for your life. Don't say you miss that man, you miss that person, you miss this soul, you miss that chance. It doesn't happen that way. Then the second thing I found out, that you must always resist the devil. The Bible says, by the shield of faith, we quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Now, I tell myself this every day. Do you know what it means to resist the devil? 
Anything the devil throws at you that is not in line with the word of God, resist it. From any source, from any place, from anybody. Can be from your boss. Can be from your spouse. Can be from your children. Can be from your friends. Anything that is thrown at you and you know you cannot see the finger of God in this thing, resist it. What do I mean? Don't suddenly comply with the devil's plans. You know what I mean? Don't suddenly allow the devil to alter your theology. Resist it. For example, if somebody says you are mad, he will not resist the devil by telling the person you are mad. He's not. You say the devil, you want me to be mad or you want me to speak wrongly. I resist you in the name of Jesus. So you need to resist the devil by the shield of faith. We quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Everywhere we go, the enemy is throwing darts, darts on us. In those days, I, I used to pray hard when the devil attacked. What do I know? I speak back to the devil. I talk back to the devil. I said, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I refuse you in the name of Jesus. I know I, I've come to find out this. Whenever the devil throws anything at you, and you stay in the victory, where I say, stand fast in the liberty wherein God has set you free. The enemy just frees it away. So this year, just resist the devil. Now, let me say this to those of us who go through emotional tantrums, you know, moody spells. You just say your mind about anything happening to you. I don't like the way things are going on. I don't like the way people are treating me. You are becoming a trumpeter of the devil. You are becoming a mouthpiece. He lasts control who does not control his thoughts. So when the enemy brings thoughts that you know you don't want, resist it. Say no to it. I was talking to somebody, and the person um, was involved in something that I was doing, and the person actually did something that was wrong. And I took the phone and I was talking to him. Hello, sir, you don't have to shout. <laughs> you don't have to be angry. You know what I mean? The father has done that. Don't repay him the way he talked. Cool yourself down and give him your points. I just saw the Lord telling me that. And I took time later, took the phone, explained to the person, and I pulled up my stand. Always be in control. Never allow the enemy to take control from you. You know what I mean? Always be in control. Be in control of your emotions, of your feelings. Always be in control. Because when you are not in control, you give the enemy a foothold. Then number three, act according to the word. The specific instruction God has given you. I'll be speaking about that on Sunday when I'm talking to the freshmen. Act according to the instruction. The Lord told um, David that, I mean Moses, that he should do it according to the instruction given to him on the mountain top. So whatever instruction the Lord has given you either in your spirit or either in his word, just act according to that instruction. As long as you are right, if it is in the word of God, act according to it. I like that song, we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he shed upon our life. 
while we do his good will, he abide with us still. And with all, who will walk, or who will trust and obey. Then number four, and I like our sister when he was praying, he mentioned it. Fix your attention on Christ. You see, everything that happens in this world are puzzling sometimes. I may not be able to explain it. It seems to me that the world is not balanced. And the more I think about the problems of the world, either as an individual or a corporate person, I'm mystified. But immediately I send my attention on Jesus. I have a solution. I simply ask, if Jesus is in this situation, what will he do? I mean, you do an exam and you fail all your subjects. It's alarming. Then you say, Am I, my brain is not right. Is my papers not well marked? Then you turn your attention on Jesus. What will he do? Or you are sick. And you don't know how you can be healed. You try everything. And then you turn your attention on Jesus. It seems to me that that is the only thing that philosophically answers the missing gap. Because I like what Jesus said. My father is greater than all. My father is what? Greater what? Than all. Oh, there's no money. My father is greater than all. Jesus had no house. He had no job. But he never begged. Jesus had all afflictions, but never opened his mouth. And so fix your attention on Jesus. And as you fix your attention on Jesus, you will know that with Jesus, impossibility does not exist. Sometimes when I see everything that happens among, on television, social media, about ministers, about preachers, about people, I see the need for me to just turn my attention on Jesus. Not on the devil. And then finally, be an ambassador for Christ. You see, this year, I want you to just decide that people will use your life and make God popular. Look, if you say God is not good, look at that man. If you say God is not kind, look at that woman. Say, God is not lovely. Look at that person. He will look at your life. You see, sometimes I ask some people asking me for something, you know. Somebody asked me something, wrote me a test. Give me money to pay this. Give me money to pay this. And I wanted to react. And the Lord said, make me popular. Make me great. And scripture says, let your good works let it so shine, or let your good works so shine before men that they might make God what? Great, heroic, glorified. And that should be your, 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 your drive this year. I don't know if you think that way. A student, you won't want to fail your exam because you want to make Jesus great. A businesswoman, you won't want to fail in your business because you want to make Jesus great. An angry person, you won't like to be angry because you want to make Jesus great. And then, most importantly, our goals this year, 
that prayer. Please keep praying about it. I'm going to transmit power to members of the church. Children's group, expand your frontiers. The teenagers meet together, expand your frontiers. It's good to have leaders as a teenagers group. But in form one, in my school, I was the president of the leader one to three. I was. In the, best, in the secondary school, I was the pastor. We were preaching in the class. We conducted our services. You know? Conducted our services together. We started at 11 years old, just through, we conducted our services together. Occasionally, we invite people. University, we conducted our services together. So, you can't organize yourself as teenagers. You can't organize yourself. And as I've already told you this, that anytime someone gives me a complaint, I see a red flag that failure is imminent. Because successful people, they only focus on solutions. And I can tell you, it is possible. I was discussing with one man today. I don't even know how deep his faith is. He said, I believe there should be no abandoned project. And he was telling me three gigantic projects he did. He said, I finished this one in four months. I finished this one in three months. This one was very large. I finished it in two years. But I never abandoned it. It's a mentality. It's a belief. It's a way of thinking. And if God says we will not be small, it means if I come to the prayer band, you won't be three. You know what I mean? You recruit people. Come to the ushers, you won't be few. You recruit people. The capacity to expand. And so we're going to have a very wonderful year. We're going to have a very beautiful year. And it's good we have started it together well with the Lord. So tomorrow, let's be here for that teaching period. Please, I'm not dressed dress nice, not necessarily flamboyant, because television is going to record you. And please, the time is 10 o'clock. Let's meet disciplined and let's meet for the meeting. Let's rise up as I pray for you and dismiss the meeting. Just raise up your hand wherever you are. May the Almighty God bless you. May he exercise his grace over your life. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, finished by the Holy Spirit, be with us now forevermore.